Caddy. Today on Flipping Science, we're going to be looking at amino acids. So what you need to do, determine whether or not a compound is an amino acid, give it the structural formula, to draw the structural formula when self-ionization occurs, and write the general formula of an amino acid and recognize the structural formula. So what are amino acids? They are used to make proteins. Um, there's only 20 that we use to make all the proteins in our body, um, and they have a particular structure. So in the structure you have an amine group on one end, a carboxylic acid group, so a carboxyl group on the other end. And then you have a variable side chain. So there's 20 different side chains that you can have. So here are some examples of some amino acids. So here we have alanine. If we look at alanine, we can see we've got the amine group here, the carboxyl group over here, and then we've got the variable group down here. In this case, the variable group is just a methyl group. If we look at tyrosine, again, we've got the amine group, we've got the carboxyl group, and then our variable group down here is much more complicated. So we've got a, a carbon, a benzene ring, and a hydroxyl group. Here are the 20 amino acids that uh, we use. Um, you can see they have many different variations on the uh, carbon chain that comes off the side chain. Uh, we have really, really simple ones. You have, uh, where is it? So you have glycine, which is just a hydrogen. Um, you have really, really complicated ones. So down here, so for example, phenylalanine, we've got this uh, benzene ring, tryptophan. We've got a whole big structure that's coming off. Um, when you put an amino acid in water, it can self-ionize. So what happens is the hydrogen from the uh, carboxyl group, um, it interacts and attaches to the amine group. And the reason why that happens is the amine group, that's basic, that can accept a proton. And the carboxyl group, it's acidic, it can donate a proton. So the hydrogen ion goes from the carboxyl group to the amine group, and you get the self-ionization occurring. This is known as a Zwitter ion. So this is the Zwitter ion form of the amino acids. If we look at these one, the amino acids again that we talked about, the 20 that make up all the proteins in your body, you can see these are all drawn in their Zwitter ion form. So the hydrogen has gone from the carboxyl group to the amine group. Here are some examples of those uh, Zwitter ions that we've talked about. So uh, here we've got the basic group from cysteine. So that's your amino group. It's uh, taken the hydrogen ion from the carboxyl group. And that's given that a positive charge. And then we've got the acidic, the carboxyl group over here. Uh, it's got a negative charge. And the same in leucine down here. So uh, we've got the amine group here, the carboxyl group over there. So here's a question similar to what you might get um, on amino acids. So we have a section of a protein chain. It says state the number of amino acids used to form this section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look. I'm going to basically draw a line where an amine group is. So we can see where it cuts off. So we've got a line there, so between the nitrogen and carbon, we've got another line here between this nitrogen and carbon, and then we'd have another line here. So if we looked at that, we have a total of three amino acids that have been used to form that section of the protein. We're going to look at proteins in a bit more detail in another video. Here's another question. It says uh, selenium is used to synthesize selenocysteine in cells. There's the structure. Now explain why selenocysteine can be described as an amino acid. Well, um, it has an amine group, and it's got a carboxyl group. It also has a variable side chain. The important bit, though, is it's got this uh, amine group, and it's got the carboxyl group, so that makes it an amino acid. Next part of the question says, draw the structural formula of selenocysteine in a self-ionized form. So we're going to draw the Zwitter ion form of selenocysteine. So I'm going to start down this end. So start with the hydrogen going up to selenium carbon group, carbon group, now yeah. down here where we go to the um, amino group, we're going to make that NH3 now, and we're going to give that a plus on the nitrogen. And up here on the carboxyl group, C double O, we're going to give that a minus charge. So now we have the um, ionized um, acids, the ionized carboxyl group, and we've got the ionized amino group down the bottom. Then it says, explain why selenocysteine is able to self-ionize. Um, selenocysteine is able to self-ionize because um, 
It contains a carboxyl group, which can donate a proton, and it contains an amino group, which can accept a proton. So it has a basic amino group and an acidic carboxyl group. The proton um, is donated from the carboxyl group to the amino group, and that's where the self-ionization comes from. So today we looked at amino acids, we looked at their structure, we looked at some examples, we looked at self-ionization. That's it for Miss Ars today. See ya. <laughs>